mathematical sciences covers a large territory. At one end, it could be very applied. At the other end, it could be very abstract. So abstract that it's very hard to explain to the layman what it's all about. Over the years, we have covered a lot of territory. The first few years, we had winners who were in the area of number theory, which is very classical and it was developed in India quite a bit. And in fact, one of the awardees went on, Manjil Bhargava went on to win the Fields Medal this year. And last year it was quite abstract in the area of algebraic geometry, but this year it's in theoretical computer science. Uh, theoretical computer science is really part of mathematics. It's the foundation, mathematical foundation that drives computer science. Uh, and we are very fortunate and we are very happy to find an excellent candidate to award the prize, and that's Professor Madhusudan. Now, to explain a little bit about his work, to prove a theorem means you start somewhere, you end someplace, and you go step by step. And each step has to be logically correct. Now we can visualize our proof in our mind and say, okay, this works. But if somebody else writes a proof to go through it and check if it's correct or wrong is extremely difficult because you had to open your eyes wide and check every line. It's very hard. You make one mistake and it's well known that if you can make one mistake, you can prove anything. So one has to be extremely careful. And so the question is, is there a way to write the proof so that a machine can check it? What if you allow the machine to make once in a while a mistake? Does that make it easier? You know, if it makes one mistake once in a thousand times or so, it's not so bad, you know? So this cycle of ideas, uh, this, this group of ideas is what uh, Professor Sudan worked earlier, and it's called probabilistically checkable proofs and he was a pioneer in it, and he has been cited many times, and this is viewed as a very fundamental work. More recently, he has been working on error-correcting codes. Now, the English language that we all communicate in has a lot of redundancy. If we read something, if there's a spelling mistake or anything of that sort, we know it's a mistake, and we subconsciously know how to correct it. But if you send something in a binary code, and if a zero gets replaced by a one, to find out what it really means is not that easy. So you have to have a procedure for coding the message, and then even if it has a few errors, you have to correct it and be able to decode it. Now, of course, this requires certain redundancy, so the original message has to be enlarged a little bit with some redundancy so that any errors can be corrected. But how much enlargement do you need in order to have a desired level of accuracy? That's not so clear. And Professor Sudan has provided with new methods which uh, make it much more economical to, to provide such procedures. So the Infosys Foundation jurors were very pleased to choose Professor Madhusudan for the award this year. And the citation reads, for his seminal contribution to theoretical computer science, especially in the areas of probabilistically checkable proofs and error correcting codes. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the Infosys Prize in Mathematics, Professor Madhu Sudan. May I request Dr. Vishal Sikha, trustee of the Science Foundation, to join the presentation.
it's, uh, it's an overwhelming honor to be here in front of all of you uh, receiving this wonderful award. Uh, I'll skip with the personal thanks and uh, cut to the chase. I wanted to say two things. One, firstly, definitely a big, big thank you to the Infosys Foundation for ins instituting these awards. And, you know, it takes a lot of uh, investment to create awards. You have to set aside a large corpus of funds. You have to think about what you want from it in the future. And the foundation has not just done that, but invested a huge amount of time. Now, this time is extremely precious for every one of us. And I really want to thank all of you for having pursued the award and to make sure that you understand, <clears throat> the whole world understands what it is that you're trying to recognize. So I really am hugely honored to be part of um, um, this effort and um, uh, to have been um, selected for this award. Uh, now, research is a team effort, and as many of you, many of you have heard before, uh, awards unfortunately get given to individuals. We are selected to represent certain areas. Uh, we are, in that sense, winners of a certain lottery. Many other candidates could have won it, but we are here. And it is, as a result, not just a recognition for me, but also a responsibility for me to pay back to the area that I represent. Now, when I think about what it is that I can do for the world of mathematics and the mathematical sciences, one clear challenge emerges. Mathematics is not very well understood by the common public, and there's a big divide between what it is that we do and what it is that you know about us for the large part. Uh, most stories that you hear about in the press about mathematics is really about the mathematicians, not about what they've done, but what they do when they're not doing mathematics. I'd really like to reduce this um, kind of an emphasis and bring us back to the place where we can all understand what kind of mathematics we are doing. Now, why did we get to this point that we are? Um, there is an analogy, uh, if you'll forgive me uh, for making a kind of a more pedestrian analogy. I think that um, you know, uh, when uh, J.K. Rowling wrote about Harry Potter and created this caricature of magicians and magic, she must have had mathematicians and mathematics in mind, really. <laughs> I mean, these strangely dressed people who talk gibberish, uh, nobody can understand what they're doing. They're doing something mysterious. Maybe it's best to just keep them in the dark in some shadows, and that's the best way to treat them. Um, this, unfortunately, is a consequence of um, how many of us are taught mathematics. Uh, the way the practitioners of mathematics think about it, it's really analogous to a language. It's a way to think, it's a way to communicate what we think. It's a language of precision and certainty, even when it's modeling uncertainty. On the other hand, the way this language is being taught to the students is the way you would say, you know, to, they're being taught to chant poems in this language. It's a mechanical road procedure that they repeatedly do perform, and this cannot increase your appreciation for the language. It, uh, in fact, creates some disdain, some dislike, and maybe a fear and loathing. So we really need to change some of that, and I do want to take part in that procedure. On the other hand, I cannot just blame uh, the other side. It's mostly uh, the mathematicians who also should be uh, held responsible to make mathematics accessible to the wider uh, uh, audiences. Mathematics, as it's uh, explained to most people, is em the emphasis is on hardness, and the emphasis is on purity. Uh, I'd like to go away from these two emphases, and I'd like to tell us that mathematics is really simple and useful. And this can, by and large, catch a lot more mathematicians. I've tried this out on eighth graders, and I've been able to explain the cutting edge of research, my own research, to them, and win some members over who wanted to do physics, and they want to do theoretical computer science now. And I think we can carry it out on a large scale. And I'm not alone in this endeavor. There's a large body of mathematicians out there who would really like to make mathematics accessible to everybody. And I think the Infosys Foundation in this award gives us an opportunity to me personally. In fact, to me, it's a responsibility. I'm required to do this at this stage. But to a large body of us, it gives us a spotlight saying, look, there's something very exciting and interesting going on. And if any of you want to hear more about it, I encourage you to contact me. And if I can't come personally to give you a lecture, I'll put you in touch with the right set of people who will be able to talk to you. And um, so, so there's a large number of people out there who are carrying on this message. 
and I'll be very happy to connect them to you. I think mathematics deserves a better chance. It's very pretty, it's very um, elegant and beautiful. Um, it should come out of the shadows.